These are the new voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its mission, to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilization, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Log Stardate 5468.2. A request has been received at Starfleet headquarters from a recently contacted civilization, the system of Marpa Blue, for accreditation as an associate member of the United Federation of Planets. The Enterprise has been ordered to Marpa Blue to consider final processing of the Marpa Bluean application. What are the Marpa Bluans like, Captain? This will be the first time we've ever met one in person, Mr. Scott. But from the records I've reviewed, they're supposed to be remarkably good natured and friendly. Stand by to energize. Stand in by, Captain. Message from the surface, sir. Their representative is ready to beam up. Thank you, Lieutenant. Energize, Mr. Scott. Energizing, Captain. There's someone in there. Can't make them out yet. Oh, there he is. Greetings, gentle beings. Humanoid, all right, Captain, but they're not very big. I got a ten-year-old cousin about that size. Shh, Mr. Scott. They may be sensitive about their size. How do you do, uh... Your council ship will do, sir. You must be Captain James Kirk. A thousand, ten thousand pleasant, happy thoughts to you. I am Council Knight Hausnick of the Marpapluan World Government. It's my extreme good fortune and pleasure to greet you on behalf of my people to present our application for associate membership in your esteemed organization. Well, what do you think, Spock? We are evidently as friendly as their communications indicated, Doctor. I'd say the Marpapaloons will be a good addition to the Federation. I extend the good wishes and greetings of my government to all the citizens of Marpaplu and welcome you, Council Hausneck, aboard the Enterprise. Would you like to see what your world looks like on a Federation cruiser scanner? Oh, yes, yes, of course I would. This way, then. Mr. Spock, Dr. McCoy, if you'll accompany us to the bridge... Wonderful. This is wonderful. This is where your ship is controlled from, then. Correct, your council ship. Over there you see engineering. That is the helm, Lieutenant Sulu, currently on station. How do you do today, sir? Just fine, thank you. And back here is communications, Lieutenant Uhura in charge. A great pleasure, madam. That is a female of your species, Captain? Yes. I am charmed beyond words, Uhura Shi. Me too. And this... Here must be the captain's position. Correct again. If you press this one... <laughs> Jim, are you all right? I'm fine, Bones. What makes you think anything is... <laughs> Wrong! Captain, despite Council Hausneck's good nature, I fail to see the reason for such unwarranted hysteria on your part. It is not in keeping with diplomatic traditions of first contact. Mr. Spock, are you accusing me of improper conduct at a serious time in... <laughs> I see what you mean, Spock. Perhaps something is wrong. Wrong? Wrong? What could be wrong? Uh, nothing, your counselship. I assure you, everything is... <laughs> Perfectly all right. Isn't it, Bones? I don't know. What are you scratching at, Jim? Uh, scratching, Bones? Yes, you've been scratching at yourself. At your side, under your arms, around your waist, ever since we entered the bridge. Aren't you aware of it? Well, I guess I... <laughs> There! You did it again! It's almost as if you... <laughs> as if I was wrong. Well, as if you... <laughs> you too, Doctor? Me too what, Spock? Captain, something very peculiar is going on. I think... Just a minute, Mr. Spock. <laughs> Bridge Captain speaking. Engineer and Scott here. <coughs> go ahead, Scotty. Is something funny, Captain? <laughs> Please, Scotty, go ahead and report. Standard engineer and status update, sir. On warp engine one, minor repairs completed. <laughs> what was that, Mr. Scott? It's only... <laughs> Mr. Scott, you may deliver your report when you regain control of yourself. Until then... The captain! <laughs> Bridge, out. I must apologize for that, Council Hausnick. Apologize? What is there to apologize for, Captain? The standard of efficiency on a Federation cruiser is normally... Normally... <laughs> Definitely something peculiar here. Captain, should I? <laughs> What's so <laughs> funny, Lieutenant? 
I don't know, Captain. What are you scratching at? Captain, something is very wrong. I can see that, Mr. Sparks. Sulu, Uhura, everyone on the bridge is laughing themselves silly, and I can't see what's funny about it. However, I do have this peculiar crawly feeling. Crawly feeling, Captain? I have it, too. Council Hausneck, I wonder if you would accompany me to sick bay for uh, some tests. I don't mean to offend you, but... Bones, the diplomatic situation we have here. <laughs> Captain, reports are coming in from all over the ship. Every deck and section. <laughs> Outbreaks of uncontrolled laughter accompanied by persistent inch-like tickling all over the body. <laughs> sections already report that their operating efficiency has been affected by the mounting hysteria. Thank you, Lieutenant. Keep monitoring the situation and report if things become more serious. Aye, sir. See, Jim, there's no avoiding it. No need to be concerned, Captain Kirk. I'll be happy to go along with Dr. McCoy. Is there something the matter? <laughs> there is, but it may have nothing to do with you, your counselship. But you greeted Captain Kirk first, sir. Now let's go down and check it out. Found something, Doctor? I think so, Spock. Come over and have a look through the microscope, Captain. It looks like hundreds of tiny bugs, Bones. That's exactly what they are, Jim. They exhibit many characteristics of fleas, but they're much smaller and tougher. I've tried everything in our anti-bug arsenal. Our most potent poisons don't even make them sleepy. Now, the first sample was taken, with his kind permission, from Council Hausnick's skin. This one's from my own epidermis. Bugs? Let me see. Why, they're only Meejis. Meejis? Naturally. Everyone has his own quota of Meejis. Don't they? Don't you? I am sorry to have to inform you, Consul Hausnick, that Meejis appear to be unique to Marpaplu. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. We've always had Meejis, so we've always assumed everyone had Meejis. Well, everyone on board has them now. And while I'm sure you'll get along fine with your Meejis, your councilship, we have no desire to share them with your people. This laughter is physically dangerous. Some of us are already so weak we're in danger of laughing ourselves to death. Just because Meejis seem to tickle rather than bite, that makes them no less dangerous to us. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I am, had we known. Yes, but you didn't. It's too late now. The entire ship has been affected. Don't your Meejis ever trouble you? I don't see you scratching them. Scratch? But why? Our Meejis never move about nervously on us. We keep them quite happy. Meejis thrive on happy thoughts. If you will think only happy thinking, they will stop moving about on your bodies and trying to make you happy. So that's it. The Meejis are emotional parasites feeding on the contentment of their hosts. Wonderful. But how can I think happy thoughts when I'm getting madder and madder? See, Captain, the angrier you are, the harder the Meejis move trying to force you into a happy mood. Even a well-meaning parasite is still a parasite. Consul Hausnick, why not rid yourselves of these Meejis? Why would anyone want to rid themselves of Meejis? Because they're driving us crazy. But the Meejis ensure that our people think only satisfied thoughts. True, this may have held us back in certain areas of our development, but we have no wars, no crime. I'm sorry, your councilship, but I'm afraid it's too late for us to adapt to the Meejis' way of living. For better or worse, we're stuck with our emotions. With exceptions. Yes. Now, if you'll just tell us what to use to get rid of Meiji. I'm sorry, Captain Kirk, but we discovered long ago that Meijis are immune to every known type of spray, antibiotic, and poison. That's one reason we've learned to live with him. We've had to. <laughs> but of course, we like it now. There are one or two poisons strong enough to kill Meejis. Unfortunately, they also kill the Meejis host. And when he dies, the Meejis migrate to a new person. Bones, you're sure we've nothing that will kill them? That's as Counselor Hausnick said, Jim. I've got samples of 235 different chemicals for use on parasitic pests. I have to report that there are 235 different chemicals which Meejis are immune to. There are certain things which will work. For example? 
spraying them with hydrochloric acid. Uh, I think we'll pass that one up, Bones. And that was the mildest successful treatment I could come up with. But we've got to come up with something. Soon it's going to become impossible to operate the Enterprise properly with everyone rolling on the deck in stitches. I'm sorry, Jim. I've tried everything in the antidote banks, and records offers no hope of finding something effective. Sorrowful. Sorrowful I am. It's not your fault, Counselor. What is it, Scotty? I had it, Captain. Half of my second shift is strapped in their box, shaking themselves apart with amusement. The other shifts aren't much better off. I cannot monitor the engine properly. The ship's general functions are going to pieces. <laughs> Captain, I don't know what to do anymore. It's all so hopeless. I know, Scotty. How do you fight a microscopic joke? I don't know what to do. I'm at my wit's end. Take it easy, Scotty. Everything will be all right in the end. Possibly. Possibly. If we assume it will not. What do you mean, Spock? You will notice that Mr. Scott is neither laughing nor scratching at himself, Dr. McCoy. Don't pray to cheer me up, Mr. Spock. It's good of you, but I tell you, I haven't been this depressed since... Here, Dr. McCoy, what are you doing? Just taking a little skin sample, Mr. Scott. Don't pay any attention to me, you were saying. It's just that I haven't seen such a sorry state of affairs in engineering since I entered the service. People laughing themselves sick over nothing. The mistakes they make in reading simple gauges, it's enough to make a man cry. <laughs> Excuse us a minute, Scotty. Jim, Spock, take a look at this. Don't stop, Scotty. We're still listening. It looks like the Meijis, but they've stopped moving. They're dead. But how? Why? Scotty? Yes, Captain. Have you exposed yourself to any strong radiation since the counselor came on board? Why, no, sir. Nothing like that. Why do you ask? You haven't worked in an irradiated chamber or handled any radiant materials? No, Captain. Only my usual duties. And they're definitely dead bones. I just don't understand how. Wait a minute, Jim. Council Hausnick, you confirmed that the Meijis were emotional parasites. You said they feed on happy thoughts and pleasant musings. That is correct, McCoy Doctor, sir, but... Now, don't you see, Jim, that's it. Mr. Scott's been so depressed and saddened from the beginning of the epidemic that his sadness overwhelmed his Meijis. He starved them to death for lack of laughter. Holmes, I think you're right. You must be right. Captain, I didn't understand... That's okay, Scotty. Just keep on being miserable. Now, hear this, all hands. This is the captain speaking. The plague of laughter which has infected the Enterprise is caused by a tiny bug called a Meiji, brought up from the world below us. These invaders can be destroyed. They feed on laughter. Everyone is therefore directed to think only sad, unhappy thoughts. This is an order. Think of something terribly depressing, an illness in your family, a sad incident from your childhood, anything which will make you want to cry. You know, Bones, that was the saddest order I've ever had to give. I realize that, Jim. It makes me want to cry, too. You two, stop it. You're only depressing me further. I do not believe depressing is wholly an accurate description in this case, Doctor. But it is certainly the strangest prescription I have ever heard you give. Jim, I... I don't feel like laughing anymore. I think that did it, Bones. It worked fast. Probably the Meijis aren't ready for such concentrated misery. They get only happy thoughts on Mopper Blue. Isn't that so, Council Hausnick? Yes, of course, Captain Kirk. In fact, I don't seem to have the comfortable feeling of my own Meijis about me. Don't worry. I'm sure you'll regain a thriving colony as soon as you beam back home. And no harm done. We can officially conclude the treaty now, if you wish. Indeed I do, Captain. But let us hurry. I feel deserted without Meijis. We'll hurry, but there's one provision that must be added to the treaty. Captain's Log, Supplemental. The Treaty of Friendship has been concluded with the system of Mapa Blue, and said people have been accepted for official associate membership in the United Federation of Planets, while agreeing to remain under temporary quarantine until safety precautions for preventing the spread of the parasitic Meijis can be developed. End log entry. Well, Bones, I think the Mapa Bluans have a lot to offer the Federation. Uh, from a distance, of course. I've heard of infectious humor, but I never thought of having to take it literally. Yes, Bones. We'll have to be careful for a while in our dealings with Council Housenick's people. Mapa Blue is just a bit too friendly for comfort at the moment. There's just one thing troubling me, Jim. What's that, Bones? It's Mr. Spock. He didn't manifest any symptoms of Meijis. No laughter, no ticklish scratching. And he must have been infected as well. Is it so surprising that the superior Vulcan system should prove immune to a disease affecting lower physical orders? But, Mr. Spock, 
I'm certain I heard you giggle. I beg your pardon, Lieutenant. You must be mistaken. No, I'm not. I distinctly heard you giggle. Spock? Giggling? Come on, Spock. Giggle for us again. Dr. McCoy, I do not, will not, and never have giggled. And now, if Lieutenant Uhura has had her fun, I have important work to attend to. <laughs> <laughs>